Hey everyone, today's video is going to be about a Western Digital that does not power on. I get these drives a lot. It should be a relatively simple fix. Let's see what's going on. All right, so this is the hard drive. Zoom in a little bit. Look at it. So this is the drive. Customer sent it in no power. Let's see what's going on with it. The first thing you're going to do is remove the PCB. I have a feeling this is just the 12 volt TVS diode. This is something that I already measured, but I didn't remove it and test anything else. So this is just a new job from the slot. Here's my multimeter. Look at this multimeter that I use. Look at this. Actually, it does the job well, so I can't complain there. So the customer didn't give me any information as to what's going on with this. But the fact that they said there's no power, you always start with the TVS diodes and it's almost always uh, an issue of over voltage or something similar where they plug in the wrong charger in this case and it causes this type of issue. So I'm gonna use the diode mode to measure these diodes. D3 is the five volt TVS, D4 is the 12 volt TVS. Let's measure D3 quickly. So this is such an awkward position. Anyway, here. 0.45 volts, that's the standard on these diodes. You can also use resistance mode, by the way, to measure this, which I'll do as well. And then the other way should read 1 point something, 1.75, there you go. So this, that, D3 5 volt TVS is actually good. Now let's go to the 12 volt. Plug it in. You see it reads zero. Clearly shorted. And then other side also reads zero. So this is the culprit, hopefully, and that's all that it needs. Oh, by the way, let's use resistance mode here. So, so we're going to measure. There you go. And if we measure this, there you go. All right, I'm gonna remove the 12 volt TVS. All right, so I'm just gonna add some flux here. By the way, for those of you that don't have a hot air station or something similar, you can just use the iron to remove it. I'm going to use hot air to remove this, but if you don't have hot air and like a hot air station or anything like that, you can use a soldering iron and just poke it away. Actually, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the lazy way here. I'm just going to use the hot air station. It's easier. Tweezers? There we go. All right, so here. There you go. Let it cool. All right, so I showed you guys how to remove the TVS diode with a hot air station. If you don't have a hot air station or if you don't have a soldering iron, you can simply try to clip it with some of these flush cutters here. I haven't done this, but I'm going to try to do it just to show you guys if it's possible or not. Pretty sure it is. shouldn't be too difficult. So this is on another donor PCB. This is not the clients. I'm not going to do this to the clients. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to try to snip it and position it this way. Let's see if I go across. There you go. All right. Okay. Move 
All right, so using the clippers actually work. Let's try it again on this one. So here. You just, oh, man, I feel like tech racks now. Let's see, with this one, can I just, yeah, there you go. All right, so <laughs> that actually worked without too much damage to the PCB itself. So this is strictly if you don't have a hot air station, which if you're watching this video, you probably don't. And if you don't have a soldering iron. Now, I don't want to use the soldering iron from yesterday because this is one of the micro tips and I don't want to ruin it to, to just like, you know, get the TBS diet off that way wasn't worth it to ruin the tip so flush cutters will do the trick so use these you can just snip it like I showed you there all right so after using the flush cutters to remove that 12 volt TVS diode I'm gonna go ahead and measure the pads themselves and see what we get so 1.59 volts and then the other direction we get 0.555 so this is good now uh, by the way the way a TVS diode works is when it's functional it's basically an open circuit so the diode does not interfere with the circuit now when the diode detects a voltage over voltage or something similar it limits that voltage by going short circuit and essentially clamps the voltage and uh, takes the voltage away from the load. So if you, this little schematic here, uh, that's basically what it does. So uh, that's what a TVS diode does. And uh, when it's functioning, you can simply measure in diode mode and you should get standard reading as if it were there. Yeah, so that's one way. And this is the other way, there you go. So. Of course, as I showed you previously, you can also use resistance mode. Resistance mode will be easier. So as long as that does not read zero ohms, you're fine. Uh, let's see, what's this here? Yeah, so 21 kilo ohms is fine. Anything but zero or anything but like a, I don't know, I've had another PCB lately that had like a 60 you know, I'm short to ground. So uh, yeah, several ways to test these diodes and, you know, make sure they're working. The most important thing you ha that you should do is to make sure that there, there's no shorts after you remove that diode itself. Um, these are some zero ohm resistors, by the way. You should always check those two, but the first thing you check is the 12 volt TVS diode. So I went ahead and removed D4 there, the 12 volt TVS. And let's see if we have the correct voltage. Uh, there you go, it's on one side, and there you go, that's on the other. So we're good there. Another thing I actually do is I normally check to see if these pads are shorted to ground. We don't have to do it in this case. Obviously we're getting the correct reading after removing the diode. Put it back on the drive. I'm going to go to PC3000, plug it in SATA port 2. 
see we got a green light here in the busy status register, which is good. Let it wait. There you go. You hit auto detect. Just going to go in the uh, utility to make sure everything is good. Quickly check sector access. Last sector. Quickly check. Smart status. Doesn't look too bad, actually. Uh, let's see. Go and turn this off. All right, so I went ahead and plugged this same drive into a regular enclosure, three and a half inch adapter. Let's see if it shows up in Windows. I always like to do this just in case the drive doesn't work or has any issues, but the drive isn't in the best shape. I'm gonna actually run one more test on it from PC3000, quickly test the heads to see what's going on with it. Make sure there's nothing else that's wrong with it. As you see here, oh, whoops. So it does show up, there's nothing to worry about on this drive. <laughs> Let me just eject it. This is a, a Windows 7 feature where the thing takes forever to eject. Let's plug it back into PC3000, SATA port 2. What I do here is a quick heads test to make sure there are no issues. And I'm gonna I'm gonna skip it. So I'm gonna let it run a little bit, just half halfway through and then skip. Halfway through and then skip. This is the last head. And there you go. So this checks out. All right, everyone. So that was a quick video on how to fix a Western digital hard drive that does not spin up when you've connected the wrong power supply to it. We get these a lot. Maybe this is going to help you guys in terms of actually doing it yourself. It's going to be a bit easier for you, hopefully, watching this video to do it yourself. You can just do it with a soldering iron. I'm probably going to make, I don't know, another video or something like that showcasing this where you can just remove it with the iron. It's not that big a deal. Some people actually just rip it off, which isn't advisable. As long as you measure it afterwards, make sure there's nothing shorted, you're good, you're safe to plug it into your computer or anything like that. So that's basically it for today. And as always, enjoy your day. <coughs>